Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy Rudy coming at you with another video. Today's video, we're talking about these, the Crank Brother Speed Lace Mountain Bike Shoe. We're doing a six month review, which I consider a long term with the amount of riding that I do. Let's get to it. All right, everybody, before we get started, I really just wanted to give you guys a little bit more information about myself so that that can hopefully help you make a better decision on if this is the right shoe for you. I weigh in at 220 pounds, I'm five foot eight, and I'm a fairly aggressive rider. I ride two or three times of trail riding during the week. I am a season pass holder at Spider Mountain, and I ride there at least once a week as well. Now with that bit of information, what I wanna do with these shoes is I wanna give you guys the pros and the cons, and I'm going to start with the cons because I could only find three reasons on what I somewhat didn't like about this shoe. So let's start with the cons. Number one, the insole. I feel like the insole maybe wore out a little quicker than even some of my basketball shoes that I've had in the past. Not a big deal because I usually replace them fairly quickly anyways. I have not replaced these yet, but the toe part of the insole is very thin at this point, six months of pretty heavily use. I do like that they put the perforation holes in the toe, so it kind of helps get some of the air moving around. Um, there is pretty good cushion on the heel of the insole. Nonetheless, these are due to be replaced. I feel like they may, they may have prematurely worn out um, in six months. Next thing is the bottom of the sole. The damage that it's taken, okay, I feel like is mostly from the one-up pedals that I ride. I have one-up pedals on my 2022 Norco range. Um, like I said, I ride bike park at least once a week. Um, and then I'll do some enduro trails mm, about twice a month. Other than that, I have a set of Crank Brother pedals that are on my Santa Cruz Bronson. They are the Crank Brother 5s, I think. Um, a nice pedal, but I feel like when you use the Crank Brother pedals, not only do they seem to fit into the grooves quite a bit better, they do less damage to the bottom of the sole, and I feel like that needed to be mentioned. Number three, the only other thing that I could find wrong with these shoes that I believe is a con, and it's, it's, it's barely a con at that, underneath the speed lace here, right? So here's your speed laces. I absolutely love these, but here on the tongue, is where you kind of fold everything up and then you put your, your, I don't know, the speed lace cover on the tongue back over the top of them like this and then you put your strap on. Not a big deal, right? Absolutely love that feature. The only thing that I found difficult was whenever you bunch up the shoelaces and you stuff them underneath there, when you put your strap back over, if you don't have them sitting correctly or have them tucked in there well, it feels like when you put the lace on, it adds a little bit more uh, pressure, uh, has like a pressure point on the top of your foot. It only took me to stop twice before I found uh, where I could tuck the laces in well, where they weren't having that pressure point on the top of my foot. That was the first ride. Other than that, I've never had another problem with them. That's the only three things that I could really find wrong with these shoes. So now we're going to move on to the pros. Pros of the shoe. I'm going to name out basically my top 10, the speed lace. I absolutely love the option that I just got finished talking to you guys about the cons. The speed lace feature is awesome because you don't have to worry about tying your shoes ever again. Once you get these, once you get this drawstring, down to where you feel comfortable, you'll never touch this again. Not only that, but whenever you get them in place and you tuck them underneath the speed lace cover here, they are completely out of the way. You don't have to worry about any laces getting tucked into your shoe or over the top so that they might get caught on something. Rather it be a branch on the side or maybe get caught in your cranks, you don't have to worry about that. I absolutely love this feature about this shoe. Number two, the cover. So this cover works really, really well, and it's breathable, so you'll still get air that rushes through there to help keep your feet cool. Number three, the strap. 
The strap that goes over the top of this shoe is awesome because once you get your speed laces in place, to get the shoe on and off, all you do is move the speed or move the strap off. Your shoe, your foot will slide right out of there. And when you're ready to put them on again, you just put you slide your foot in, strap it down, and you're good to go. Quick and easy, no shoelace tie-in, no having to pull that drawstring out and readjust. It's got straps that are on the tongue that kind of help nice keep everything nice and compressed. And this basically acts as a heel lock that just locks your foot into the shoe. I've never felt more secure in any shoe that I've had. I've had three different pairs of 510s and I've had another pair of Ride Concepts. These feel more locked in than any other shoe I've ever had. Number four, the silicone dots. You probably can't see them, but there's these little nice rubbery silicone dots that are on the heel of the shoe. So they grab onto your sock and they just help keep your shoe from moving around and they also help feel more secure. I, I cannot stress to you enough how, how good these things fit and how secure your foot is once you have them locked in place. Absolutely love that. Number five, this upper material that they use here on the front of the shoe uh, is very, it's a very lightweight material. There is some toe protection, um, but I have taken some foot, some rocks to the foot when you're going down the trail and it hasn't done much, if any, damage to the outside of the shoe. So I think that really says that they used a good durable material, but it's also light and very breathable material that they used. Really like that. Number six, the vents. They have little vents in the toes. They have these little windows on the side here. And the tongue, it's, it's, it's nice and soft, but you can feel when you're cooking, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour down the hill, you can feel like nice, good breeze coming through. And in South Texas, you really grow to appreciate all the little vents and pockets of air that come through whenever you're riding on the trail. Number seven, I kind of mentioned it a little bit. There is a little bit of toe protection here. Now, I wouldn't go slamming your toe into anything, like kicking anything real hard, but I, like I said before, I've taken some pretty heavy um, rock strikes to the toe area, and yes, it still hurt, but I couldn't imagine how much worse it would be if there wasn't any toe protection. Number eight, the cushion. The cushion that these things have around the ankle and the heel and how your heel sits in there and it has cushion underneath there, it just helps lock your foot in place and gives you cushion, you know, just makes it feel really nice and soft. And if you have your pedals that are rubbing on the side or you get on your pedal awkwardly and you're pedaling a couple times and you kind of feel that push against the, the material, like it's just, it's nice, soft and plush. And also because of this uh, area around here being so cushioned, um, so pillowy, it also helps keep debris from sliding down into your shoe. So if you get rocks and sticks, it just sits right there on the lip and you can simply get your finger in there and sweep it out and not have to worry about stuff getting in your shoe. I don't get, a, I don't have a huge problem with rocks and debris getting into my shoe and being uncomfortable. On my 5010s, yes, especially the ones that were a low top, not so much the high top ones. Number nine, the fit, the fit of the shoe. 90% of the shoes that I have are nine and a half. Yes, there are some oddball shoes that are slightly big and slightly smaller, but if I order a shoe and nine and a half, 90% of the time that shoe is going to fit. That's what I ordered, this is what I have, the shoe fits great. I feel like you can have confidence that if you wear a size 10, that that size 10 shoe is going to fit you very close to any other size 10 shoe that you have purchased. And I really like to have that confidence, especially when it comes to ordering something that I don't get to try on in the store and I just order it online, which unfortunately, probably 80% of what I buy, I buy online. Number 10, let's talk about the bottom of the soles. I did touch on it a little bit as a con, but it's also a pro. Now, on the top of the toe here, they have some directional, um, some directional rubber, and on the heel, they also have some directional rubber. 
that really helps you on the climbs. Also, with this rubber being so soft, much softer than the Stealth that's on the, the 510s, um, it helps really lock your pedals into place. It also helps kind of dig into the ground as you're hiking biking and going up those steep, um, those steep climbs whenever you're trying to push your bike up. There is a lot of mm, trail feel. They don't deaden the trail so much like my 5010s do. They also have way less rebound, I feel, than my 5010s. Once my pedal is set on these shoes, they feel great. But I can still feel a little bit of the big hits on the trail, and I really actually do like that about this shoe. Overall, this shoe is very comfortable. I feel like it's very durable. It's got some stitching that goes across the toe that I feel like is going to help the rigidity and keeping the shape of the shoe rather than having it glued. I really, I could talk more about this shoe, but for the length of the video, I wanted to keep it short and let you guys know that this shoe is awesome. If you like the video, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Peace out, go ride your bike.